Now let's move on to PID. The firmware version we are using is 2.55B7. Under the Upgrade tab, you can check the available firmware. As you can see, there are many different versions of the firmware to select, but the factory recommends 2.55B7 and nothing else. The reason why the factory recommends this firmware version over the others is because it has proven to be the most stable. Now let's move on to the Basic tab. Under the Basic tab, you'll do most of your PID tuning. Before we start PID tuning, we need to first understand what is PID. Well, P describes the power of disturbance response, which means how strongly the stabilizer responds to change. D value reduces the reaction speed. Think of it like a dampening effect. I value changes the speed at which the stabilizer returns to horizon. Too high of a P value will cause high frequency oscillations. Also, a high D value will cause the same high frequency oscillations and too high of an I value will also cause the same high frequency oscillations. You can see the current PID settings for that profile under PID controller. Under motor configuration, you can see power. Power is basically how much available torque the motors have to respond to change. Too much power can overheat your motors. If you're experiencing high frequency oscillations, you'll need to decrease your P and D values by 5 to 10 points. The factory has spent quite a bit of time testing their PID across many different camera body types and lenses. What we have noticed is that customers who experience oscillations usually have trouble balancing the stabilizer correctly. Once the stabilizer is balanced correctly, the factory PID is very stable. If oscillations do still occur due to the stabilizer overcorrecting because you have a lighter camera setup, then adjusting PID values down is the right direction. Under Profile, you can load and save profiles. We highly recommend saving the factory profiles before you start making changes. On to Motor Configuration. Pay attention to the pitch. Notice Inverted is selected. Alex is going to demonstrate Auto Mode. Auto Mode is going to detect the number of poles and position of the motors. Auto mode is good, but not always correct. Notice how Alex is going to have to change the number of poles for roll, pitch, and yaw to 22. Currently, it is detected at 24, 24, and 23. If you have the incorrect number of poles, your stabilizer will not function properly. Below is sensor. There are two sensors in the DS1 the camera IMU and the frame IMU. What Alex is going to do is check the position of the camera and frame IMU. First, he's going to turn off the motors to make this a little bit easier. Now, he's going to move the gimbal to check to see if the gauges on the right are matching the movements that he's making with the gimbal. There might be a slight delay between Alex's movements and what is recorded on the screen. Alex is now going to check the position of the frame IMU. In terms of PID calibration, we do not recommend changing the settings under sensor. 
Let's move on to the RC tab. Input mapping is where the function of the joystick can be modified. Alex is going to demonstrate switching the joystick control. Roll is usually not assigned a function, but in this case, Alex is going to assign RC Virtual Channel 2 to Roll. Watch Alex demonstrate now how RC Virtual Channel 2 controls Roll. FYI, some earlier versions of the DS1 used different hardware and as such will have different control setups. Before we move on, Alex can revert back to original joystick settings. Now let's move on to Command Assignment. Under Command Assignment, you can see Profile 1, 2, and 5. These are the profiles assigned to the joystick. Pressing the joystick once will switch between Profile 1 and Profile 2, which are Follow and Lock Mode. Pressing and holding the joystick for 2 seconds will enter Headlock Mode. If you want the DS1 to start in a certain profile, you can assign it under Command Assignment High. Scrolling down will reveal settings for the joystick speed. Alex is going to demonstrate inverting the movement control of the joystick on the pitch axis by deselecting inverse. Now Alex will demonstrate adjusting the speed of the joystick by slowing down the movement of the joystick. If you want to add a softer start and slower stop, adjust the expo curve. Under the Service tab, you'll be able to turn off those buzzer sounds by deselecting Command Confirmation. Under the Service tab, you can assign functions to the menu button. Each click corresponds to a function, and each click has a multitude of functions that can be assigned to it. We do not recommend assigning Calibrate accelerometers. Battery monitoring used to be handled by the software, but with the DS1, battery monitoring is now handled by the hardware so this section is unused. Moving on to follow mode. Deadband in degrees is at what point the stabilizer starts to follow you. Currently we're set at 8 degrees. Once you move past 8 degrees, the stabilizer will start to follow you. Expo curve will basically smooth out that follow. If you tend to move around a lot, you might want to consider raising the expo curve to slow the follow movement of the camera. If you'd like to adjust the speed of the follow, go to the speed column and adjust the values. LPF stands for Low Pass Filter. This helps with smoothing. Monitoring tab allows you to see real-time data readouts from sensors and motor output. The screen is helpful when trying to identify sources of vibration. The Filter tab it's a great place to microtune the PID. These filters are designed to help smooth out the stabilization. If you're experiencing some oscillations, try a value of 60 under low pass second order. One more thing about profiles. There are five profiles on the DS1. Profile 1 is the follow mode. Profile 2 is headlock mode where only yaw follows. Profile 5 is lock mode where all follow is disabled. Profile 3 has a different PID settings. The reason for this is because it is set up to work with lighter cameras. Along with Profile 3 is Profile 4, which is a lock mode designed to work with lighter cameras. Compare the difference between PID profiles of 1 and 3. Well, thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and if you want the best in camera stabilization, don't forget that Al Dolly delivers the best in customer support for your Beholder DS1 or MS1. 
For repairs to troubleshooting, Al Dolly offers 100% product support.